But let's get to probably the most contentious issue and the one I thought I'd have the most problems with, but I was surprised they handled fairly well for the Whedonverse, which is Malady Returns. And of course, if you've been keeping up, I thought she was dead. The answer is kind of yes, kind of no. The way they got out of it was a little dicey. However, I do think the trade-off was pretty solid because the performance with Malady against a certain person, I'm just going to say that, was very interesting and very powerful. It is a little derivative. As I said, this character feels a little bit too close to Spike. There's a lot of overlap between Malady and the Joker, but so be it. So it's not totally original, but very committed performance, very intriguing, gives a few more character details. So I think overall, it's not a good idea to quote, reverse a death, but, and the explanation was a little iffy, but nevertheless, I do think we got a very solid performance with Malady and finally, someone stood up to True, because it was getting a little weird that Amelia, or whatever we're going to call her, because technically she has multiple identities, and so I think that was overdue. A lot of people said they didn't remember these events from this episode. I disagree. Several things stuck out that there was finally a confrontation in terms of her bad habits, which I think they took too long to get to, but they finally did. There's also some intriguing extra backstory details we get with a few characters. One, basically there's a break-in to get some files. I'm just going to leave it there. So I thought that was very well done and very organic. But were there a few contrivances? Well, again, I'm not a native of London or Britain. I am a student of Britain. I love British culture. I love British women. love British things, British films. So I'm not quite sure if it's normal for Britain to experience this many earthquakes. So that felt a bit of a contrivance. But again, if you are native to London and Britain, please let me know if that's normal, because they definitely leaned on that a little bit too much for the plot to progress. But overall, I did think the events flowed fairly well with Mundi, with Penance, and for most of the gang. Probably the one place I did think we have to be critical about is, for lack of a better word, is the female Charles Xavier and her motivations vis-a-vis -vis the Glancy. Because we're finally getting a little bit more with Calanthity. It's, it's not a total mystery anymore. And just the motivations of what she wanted to do. Again, she was committed, and that's fine. You know, she can be very passionate. So that felt true, but I'm still wondering what were the steps in her mind to do what she did. Because I will say this. This is one of the best episodes of The Never because it leads very organically to an incredible, I don't want to understate this, amazing cliffhanger it is really jaw-droppingly good you're like whoa where are we going to go next because it was very well done so the tension built up towards the final scenes was very very strong but again it still felt a little dicey why certain decisions were being made that said for most of the episodes it was very organic in terms of various conspiracies with the quote thuggish elements and of course whatever we want to call this, the New Watchers Council and the way they're scheming to control the Touched and all those things. So overall, very strong character work, performances were very on point. And I want to take a little bit of time on just the sheer beauty of the episode. Because again, as I said, I'm not a native to London, but I do know somebody who worked on the crew. I'm not bullshitting, this is a complete truth. Somebody who worked on it and let me in on a little bit of secret that London apparently does not get that much sunlight. So they had to really scramble with a lot of shots. And it does not show. It feels very natural. The sheer beauty with the cinematography, just the way people are moving, the way certain objects are lit. And there's, of course, the symbolism of the phones. So that came across very strongly. So if you are just jumping aboard on the Nevers and still have doubts, this is definitely, I think, one of the best representations of the entire series. And it gives me a lot of hope that at least some of the plot threads and twists for season one will be very powerful. And I do hope they pick up the story later on, perhaps in a movie or miniseries. Again, remember with Firefly, we eventually got an extra movie. Again, we want more, but we got something. So overall, I'm going to give this a very high recommendation. I can't say too many things, so I don't want to spoil it for new people. But I think people will be mostly satisfied with Episode 8 of The Nevers.